everybody knows you hunt deer when it's cold. They move better. Uh, Texas is a little bit different. Uh, if you're a whitetail fanatic like Mr. Alan Rovig of McWhorter Custom Rifles, it doesn't make any difference how cold it gets. <laughs> Late season in Iowa, that's about as cold as you can expect to hunt. And it doesn't make any difference to Alan. He's gonna have that muzzle loader there and he's gonna be looking for a monster. Well, it's January the 3rd, 2017, and we're doing the last hunt of the year up here in Iowa. I was lucky enough to draw a late season Iowa muzzleloader tag. The first afternoon we got there, we, uh, we talked with Gabe about some of the bucks that he had on Cam Tracker, and he gave us an aerial and, and pointed us to a, a, a bank spline that he had. And I just think this one where I want to put you in tonight, there's a ton of, ton of standing beans. It's one you can slip right back into the morning. Pretty much in Iowa, late season, uh, we were concentrating on uh, standing beans. The first afternoon, we get in a bank spline that's situated on a hilltop. Uh, it's in some cover crop, uh, gives you a good entrance where you can get in the back of the blind without the deer seeing you, but we got in that afternoon. And really, the, the way that the beans, how tall they had gotten, you couldn't see over the edge. The, the stand really needed to be moved a little bit, so. One had his head down right here, but I mean, it was still over the hill. But we sat there and we saw no shooter bucks this afternoon, but this stand looked like it had a lot of promise. Our first afternoon wasn't very eventful. We decided we we're gonna go back to the same blind in the morning because we got a straight north wind that's gonna blow right in our face. So we ease in there, we get it all set up. Uh, we got the blind all closed up, we get in there. When we opened up all the, all the windows and we started looking, there's uh, quite a few does out. 10 slick heads. About 10 o'clock, we decided we're gonna get down. Second afternoon, Iowa, late muzzleloader season. The 45 XML is just ready to go. My trigger finger's itching. It's about 15 degrees, really cold out here. So we're gonna get in the blind early about one o'clock. We got a northwest wind, uh, standing beans, a different setup than, than yesterday. And uh, Gabe's got some good pictures there. So hopefully one of them makes an appearance today. So for that afternoon, Gabe decided to put us in a spot that we'd hunted on our previous trip two years ago. This was a long corn strip going in down to some standing beans at the bottom, and uh, the corn had pretty much been eaten up, but we got in there good and early in the afternoon. Those does disappeared, the soybean field rolls down like that, so. If we get a big shooter out, we're gonna shoot him right when he jumps the fence. All right, will you? <laughs> More bugs. A doink. A dink. 
and a decent one. Got a couple bugs come in there. We had a, a dink, a doink, and a decent one. So, decent being about a 128 point, and it's three years old. So, anyway, they're coming in late tonight. Maybe one of these big shooters will show up. Brush Country Monsters is brought to you by McWater Custom Rifles, the most accurate hunting rifles in the world. Yeti Coolers, built for the wild. Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue, real Texas barbecue. Safari Club International Foundation, first for wildlife. And Hoff Power Auto and Outdoor Stores, over 50 years in Central Texas, and we couldn't have stuck around this long if we were steering you wrong. Brush Country Monsters is brought to you by Chupacabra Rub. Put it on meat, put it on veggies, put it on Texas. Swarovski Optique, see the unseen. Heart Rifle Barrels, unparalleled performance handcrafted one at a time. Burger Bullets, shoot better, shoot burger. And John Burl's High Adventure Company, the finest collection of big game hunting, wing shooting, and sport fishing destinations in the world. Uh, day three morning, we get back in the bank spline on the hill, uh, on the standing beans. Three does and that little buck over the hill. That other buck was with him, you couldn't even see him. They walked right down around that edge, down through that bottom, and you couldn't see them again until they came out of there. So that's why I'm wanting to move this stand over. We see quite a few deer. We see about a 140 buck uh, leaving the beans to our left. Uh, looked like a good three-year-old. We saw several other bucks, but we still couldn't see the lower right-hand corner where we thought that most of these deer should be. Yeah, he's got all kind of crap on the other side. He's real good, too. I wish I could get some footage of him. I mean, like, that's a future giant right there. Mid-morning, we got up with Gabe and Gabe brings his tractor in there and we get some helpers and we didn't have to move his blind but about 50 or 60 yards uh, to the east there. We moved it about 50 or 60 yards down to the left was all it took. It opened up the whole other slope. It gave us a whole lot more shot possibilities. We could see the corner we were looking to see and uh, we thought we were in, in, good, in good shape for that afternoon set. 50 yard adjustment, we're ready to kill. So for the third afternoon, we uh, eased along a, a frozen creek and got up in this stand and it wasn't long before deer started showing up. Pretty good movement day, but just no shooters. You know, a couple of young bucks, uh, some deer got out in the field, the field started filling up and then for no reason, uh, they, just, they just scattered. I don't know if a coyote that we didn't see scared them, but for some reason they all fled the field and that kind of alerted the deer that hadn't entered the field. So all in all, it just it wasn't a very eventful set. Uh, we let the deer clear the field, we eased down, we walked carefully and uh, we eased back the truck and we were ready for our fourth day. This is the fourth morning of our hunt, and uh, we've got three days left, and uh, the weather's gonna be right. We just need Big Boy to show up, so we'll see what happens this morning. It's the fourth morning of our hunt. We're getting kind of deep into the hunt. We're starting to worry. We decide we're going to go back to the bank spline that we had just moved into a better position the, uh, the morning before. So we slip in there. We get in there way before daylight. Everything's closed up. When it starts getting light, we open up the windows and there are deer everywhere. A lot of does, the same usual suspects, some up and comer bucks. Oh, there's a buck. A little dinky buck. And another buck. We sit there all morning. We sit there at about 10 o'clock and it's just not happening. Uh, all right, well that's the fourth morning. We saw some, saw a lot of deer and we saw one possible shooter if he's not busted. So we're gonna come back here this evening. All the deer are cleared now. We're gonna come back this evening and get in here early about one o'clock because it's, it's a perfect day. I mean, cold and that's, when the big bucks come out on these standing beans. 
It's the fourth afternoon. Now we're really getting nervous. So we go back to the banks blind. We get up in there at 1.30 in the afternoon. Deer start immediately filtering out. And then all of a sudden they run off. The wind's blowing right in our face. I have no idea what just blew those deer. They looked up the field right here. Took off. About four o'clock, the field started filling back up with deer and the usual suspects, they come back, come back out again. We got young bucks. We got a, a pretty good up and comer. We got an eight pointer out there that's uh, actually, we figure it's only three and a half years old. He's got double drop times, just not a very big deer, but just a very cool deer. Uh, I noticed some movement back in the corner that earlier in the hunt we couldn't see, but since we moved the blind now we can see it. And out comes a, a, a big rack. Uh, it wasn't huge. We thought it was a shooter initially. It was a big five by five, probably 155 inch deer, had a short G4 on one side. We watched him and watched him and watched him and we know it's late in the hunt, but we just, we just decided to pass on him. He was a, a beautiful animal. We figure he was four and a half, could have been five and a half. You really couldn't see his whole body line because he kind of stayed in these tall beans, but we figure he was a pretty mature deer, but we gave him a pass. It's late in the hunt, it was very hard to do. Brush Country Monsters is brought to you by Big and J Long Range Attractants. The aroma is super strong. The range is super long. Borden Accuracy, makers of the Rimrock, Alpine, and Timberline custom actions. The G7 BR2 Ballistic Range Finder, built for the first shot. Swagger, the bipod with moves. Revolution Safe Company, inspired by Pendleton. Rotating gun management made simple. And New Breed Archery. No hype, just hunt. So we got up with Gabe, we talked to him. He's got another spot that's way down on the Missouri line. This was a small farm that, that he had trophy managed for years and he had another big bank spline set up on it. It had two spots of standing beans. Uh, the one to the, the east was one we were gonna hunt. The one to the west didn't really have a blind on it. So we decided we were gonna hunt the east blind. That afternoon we get in there real early. We get in there about one o'clock. We hook the ozonics up, we hook the buddy heater up, it's still really cold, we start scraping ice off the windows, the uh, usual routine for us now. And uh, pretty early, a, a huge group of does came out in these beans and they're just all over the place and they're just out there munching and chewing and we're thinking, man, a big buck's gotta show up any minute. <laughs> I know there's somebody in that blind because I heard the truck pull up. Eventually these does just kind of fed off to our left. They disappeared down into this little cedar valley. And uh, right an hour before dark, the, the, the whole field was just void of deer. Now we're down to our last day. Six days coming up, we still don't have an Iowa puck dead on the ground. Make sure I like looking at trail camera pictures. That's the split two buck. That's the one I seen last night. We reviewed the card. There's a big non-typical on there. Probably only four and a half years old, but probably still 175, 180 inch deer. Look at that tank. I was hoping to see a couple of other decent bucks on there. I don't know. That don't mean they ain't there. There's a lot of deer out just outside on the edge of the camera range. It looks like some other good bucks. So Chad and I, we decided, look, we got to do something desperate here. It's, it's the last day. I pull one of my pop-ups out of the back of the truck. Everything is much harder at three degrees. And our blind didn't even want to come out this way. Get this blind all staked down in the wind. We brushed it in best we can, and we're ready for our last afternoon hunt in Iowa. It's do or die. Today we're going to talk about muzzleloader. You know, with us chasing these big whitetails and elk all over the country, there's a lot of states that either they don't have a centerfire rifle season at all, or they got a very abbreviated season, or they got a post rut season. But they have some great muzzleloader seasons. So. 
With factory rifles being what they are, 150 yards, maybe 200 yard max, several years ago we decided we're going to make our own muzzleloader. So when we came out with the 50 XML, um, it uses a Sabbath, shoots a 325 grain bullet, 2400 feet a second with smokeless powder. It also shoots uh, black powder at 2200 feet a second. Uh, we just thought we needed a little bit more, so we came out with a 45 XML. It was a great gun, one MOA, but the 45 XML, after two years of research, we've come out with this gun. This gun shoots the same bullet, 325 grain bullet. It's a 45 caliber bullet. It's sized to the bore, but it will shoot that bullet 2,750 feet a second. That's 5,500 foot-pounds of energy out of the muzzle. That's still got 2,000 pounds at 600 yards. So this is a 600-yard gun, and that's just a, a game changer. It has a tungsten carbide bushing in the breech plug that's good for several hundred shots and is easily replaceable. So this is the ultimate muzzle loader. I mean, these are more accurate than any factory rifle out there. And when you have the advantage of shooting 600 yards, you're already way ahead of the game. There's nothing primitive about this weapon. So if you're interested in one, give us a call today at McWhorter Custom Rifles, and that's our on-target tip of the week, brought to you by McWhorter Custom Rifles. We get in there, the most important piece of equipment we got, the buddy heater, we get it going. It's nice and toasty in the blind. Wind's just howling outside. It's still about six degrees, I think. So buddy heater made it, made it nice. So we're sitting there and we said, this has got to be a great spot. We're expecting to see tons of deer. One doe walks out. She feeds for about an hour. We're expecting more deer to show up any time. And it's looking like it's going to be a slow afternoon. We've got about an hour and a half left in her hunt. This is the last hurrah. We, we found a new spot. Gabe told us about a new uh, standing bean field. We got a south southeast wind. It's right in our face. So we're, we're perfect. So uh, hopefully a big shooter will show up today. This is our last day. In the corner at 210 yards. That's a shooter. Big 10. Big 10. This huge symmetrical 5x5 five five walks out. When he walks out, he surveils the field just a little bit, picks his head up, kind of messing with a licking branch, puts his head back down, and by that time, I'm, I've got the 45 XML on him. I've got it dialed in 210 yards. Hey, you're on him, he's probably so right now. You ready? He's fixing to kill him. You ready? very first opportunity after sitting there in this cold for six days that he gives me with a broad shot shot, we drive that 325 grain bullet going 2,750 <laughs> feet a second right through both oh, shoulders. Boy. boy, that happened quick. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Boy, oh boy. Big, big owl buck down. Big owl buck down. We've been up here for, this is the sixth day, and it's about four o'clock. So we're down to the last hour and a half. And this buck walked out at 210 yards, and I didn't see him go down, but I saw the exit wound when he turned and ran off, and it's, he's center punched, so. He looked at And he's gotta be down right there. <laughs> there he is. There y'all, he's dead. He's dead. <laughs> oh, oh, big. Look at the rack on this joke. <laughs> Woo! What an owl monster. Look at this. <laughs> oh, wow. But well, this is our end of the season Iowa giant buck. I mean, just a perfect 160 inch 10 pointer, probably. Long beams, big sweeping long beams, good mass, perfect long tines, 12 inch back tines. 
Just uh, we've been hunting hard this whole week. It's been down to negative seven and we just hadn't had much luck and we passed up about 155 inch deer earlier in the week and we were starting to get a little down. We had an hour and a half left and only seen one doe and, uh, and this big guy walked out. What a, what a brute. 45 XML with the board and action and the heart barrel. We got a Swarovski scope on top of it with a turret. And we dialed it one click over 200. He's about 210 yards. It, it, that, that 327 grain bullet really does a, does a job. Let's get him tagged and uh, we're uh, our Iowa hunt and our season for 2016-17 has come to an end, a happy end. Nice job, Alan. That was an awesome Iowa buck, but I'm still cold just thinking of that. Until next week, always remember, keep God and family first.